Welcome back to Robbie Minds. Now, the creative sector in Nigeria has made a lot of us proud in Nigeria and in the diaspora. I'm talking about film, I'm talking about music, and also fashion. Um, gone are the days when Nigerian fashion has been relegated to the backstage. Now, our celebrities and our dare say global superstars love to identify with our indigenous fabrics, with our designs from Nigeria. And to join me in conversation about just the huge potential the fashion industry has here in Nigeria, I have with me the founder and CEO of the eponymous label, Banke Kuku. Banke Kuku, welcome to Robin Minds. Thank you for having me. So good to be here. I love the outfits. I can Thank definitely you. recognize you're wearing <laughs> yourself, Banke course, Kuku. Yes. Um, there's something about your, um, I'd say your fabric, your love for textile design. These days, if I see it, I'll be able to spot it. I'll just say, oh, this is Banke Kuku, right? Um, <laughs> what you. inspired that love for fashion and in particular, um, textile design? So I have always been like a creative since I was younger. So, you know, at primary school, I was always in the art department and I always used to like love making things with my mom. Um, so I just kind of progressed and I went in, I went to art school um, and sort of stumbled across textiles. Um, we had to, I went to St. Martin's in London and we had to do like different specialisms. So I did um, textiles, sculpture and something else. I didn't really think too much about it. And then once I started to go into textiles, I was like, I was in love with it. And I just didn't turn back. Hmm. Interesting. So that art was what informed on the fashion. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. Now, for the longest time in the fashion industry, um, there's always been issues with designers trying to get um, quality fabrics. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of um, counterfeit. Mm -hmm. um, some of the big brands, you're not sure which is real, which is fake, which is China. So um, what led you into going to something that's not very popular with our designers, creating your own fabrics? Because, I mean, I think my first love is textiles design. So I mean, before I went into fashion, I was designing fabrics for other um, other brands as a text as their textiles designer, and I also had my own soft furnishing line. So how I went into fashion was um, my 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 customers loved my prints that I would do for my cushions and my curtains, and so I kind of felt that okay, well, actually, one customer had asked, you know, can I make her a kaftan, and she loved it, and everyone liked it, and people started asking me for more pieces. So I decided to make pieces that would complement my homeware line, so which was loungewear. And then we had lockdown. So I had the pajamas, the caftans, the robes, and then it sort of started to do really well because everyone was at home. So people wanted like stylish things they could wear at home. And, you know, that's kind of my journey within fashion. And then, you know, as the, as the world started to open up, people wanted to go out. So I kind of made my loungewear occasion, oca occasional pieces. So you have like pajamas with feathers or embellished pajamas or like more fitted items. And so that was like, that's where we are today. Mm. So you've always been in touch with the people and that yes. has really formed a yes. huge yes. part of your creative process. Exactly. Now, when it comes to um, costing, there's some kind of debate like when people go into the market or in a store or online mm. and they see some of these prices by Nigerian designers, mm. there's almost that expectation that it should be more affordable compared to um, foreign designers. Mm. Like, why do I have to pay so much for this? Is it not even made in Nigeria? Is it not no. even by a Nigerian designer? How do you respond to that? Because I have a good idea of your pricing. Yeah, well, first of all, the cost of production is pretty high. Um, with diesel at the price it is, it's, it's pretty high. And also the cost of the materials, because everything is pretty much... In Nigeria, everything is imported, so you have to pay for the cost of shipping and clearing and all those kind of things. And... I think people, I mean, I like to pay my stuff well, so I don't think it's fair to, to, you know, to sell things at high prices and not be fair with your salaries. And it's just, it's, it's not cheap. Good work takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of research. And that's, you know, that all comes out in the price. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, have you ever considered like what some designers do maybe a diffusion line mm -hmm. where maybe you're using some of the local fabrics, for example, um, like the Adire, your tie-dye, batik. Um, is that something that um, your customers have said, oh, um, I'd like this? Well, I mean, eventually, maybe one day a diffusion line may come out, but I really want to establish who we are right now and really get people accustomed to what I do and 
own my identity. So that's the primary focus right now. Um, in terms of using local fabrics, definitely as long as, you know, we, we maintain our ethos, as in we design our prints ourselves and we tell our own story in that way, we're always a Nigerian story, then it's definitely something I can consider doing. Okay. Now, for the market, um, mm -hmm. a lot of things have, are problems that drive up this cost of production. Of you mentioned um, diesel. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that um, government is doing enough to create that enabling environment to support um, fashion designers, textile designers, people within that space, whether um, through grants, or single digit loans do you get any um, support or do you feel I mean at the moment designers are really working hard to, and we kind of support ourselves a lot of the time um, and you know we all have to pat ourselves on the back because it's a really hard environment but you know I have been part of conversations where the government is looking to support designers more um, and you know it's looking really promising and I think amazing things can happen very soon Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to the people who wear, um, I, I find it as an aspirational brand. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me about the Banke Kuku man or Banke Kuku woman. Um, who is this person and what? Do, how do you feel when they put on your fabrics? Um, they're not necessarily Nigerian. Um, what does that mean to you? Well, um, for me, a Banke Kuku man or woman is like, because we're such an inclusive brand. So we don't, I mean, in terms of how they look, we're, we, we cater for all shapes and sizes, tall, we cater to all religions. So we try and include everyone in our, within our collections. Um, the, the Banke Kuku woman definitely is a person who loves quality, is in love with African design. It may not necessarily be seen as Ankara or Adira. And Ankara is actually not a Nigerian fabric, but Adira is, but it tells a Nigerian story. And so I think, you know, they, they love to express themselves in that way. And I think, you know, our designs really give our customers joy. So it's someone who is definitely looking to have a bit of pos positivity um, maybe during the day or during the time of their life when they're wearing my pieces. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, the, the my banker kuku customer is someone who appreciates culture and it, and they also appreciate sort of the values of our brand so you know we're very inclusive and um we like to we like to enlighten our customers as well about what the prints are about which kind of it's almost like we document history or we tell stories so so as a customer looks at our pieces they want to know more you know what is this print about and then we tell them the journey the story behind it so yeah, that's my that's my thought. Now I know the Banke Koku brand has been well received in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but um, you have roots in the UK, like yes. you you specified earlier in the conversation. So, what has been the um, um, the reception from foreigners, from people that are not used to Nigerian designers, or what what kind of feedback do you get? Um, because I take a lot of my inspiration from what's around me. So my time in the UK has inspired my work as well. So I would say, yes, it is Nigerian design, but it's also fused with Western culture. Um, we've had really good response. So we've had pop-ups in the Middle East, in London, um, in different parts of Europe as well. So, um, I think people, they, people just love the colors. They love the story. They love the positivity. So it has been very well received and, you know, we look to do a lot more. Mm. Um, I don't know how the quote goes about um, imitation being mm. the best form of flattery. I yeah. think that's it. <laughs> um, you know, on social media, there's um, what I ordered versus what I got. Yeah. Now, a lot of times um, people who can't afford these brands will mm. see it and they will give their tailor and say, yeah. we'll go and copy it. How do you respond to that? Do you see it as, oh, I'm flattered that they're trying to copy, maybe not the design, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not the, the textile design, but maybe the fit or the way you use your feathers or the way mm. you cut your fabric? Well, I'd say like it's the industry, it's fashion, it's not just in Nigeria, it's all over the world. And as a designer, I don't get myself too immersed in that side of things because you can, you know, you can just, it, it just get too consumed in it. So I, I just focus on constantly elevating, changing my designs and kind of pushing on with what I'm doing. But, you know, it's there will be people who may not be able to afford my pieces so there will be other brands who come up with something cheaper but that's just the just that's just the market you know sometimes people that you know you know very expensive brands and you may not be able to afford that so there is space in the market for a, a brand who is offering a cheaper product that doesn't mean that you know they're trying to do anything malicious it's just the it's just the market and it's just something you have to come 
to accept if you are in the business of fashion. Mm, okay. I think that's a very positive um, mm. outlook on that. But um, uh, are you open to collaborations? Um, is that course. something we yes. should expect? We've seen in the past maybe designers collaborating with artists, mm -hmm. um, with painters, mm. we, and given your um background in art is that something we can expect in future collections oh, definitely i mean we have done a, a, quite a few collaborations already and we look to to do more i mean in terms of colla um, collaborating with other designers they're definitely designers that i i really respect and i love their work especially designers that work with very traditional techniques i think it could be such a nice contrast to the our modern way of working um and we could create something really inspiring and interesting that way Mm. Now, um, someone watching it would be like, wow, this is um, sounds so beautiful, mm -hmm. like she's doing so well. But a lot of times people don't see um, the sweat, the blood, the tears. Can you tell us about some of the challenges you've had over the years and how you've been able to push through them and become this successful brand that you are? I think one of my biggest challenges was definitely kind of identifying who I who I who I am as a designer and what I do. And I think I've been through such a journey from when I started as like just a textiles designer, designing for other brands, then to having my own interior brand and now to pushing my fashion business. So I think that journey in sort of self discovery has been challenging because you question yourself, you question your skills, you question your talent sometimes. And you know that can that's like stumbling blocks um so you know um and you're also you're forever changing um obviously the the market we are in right now is forever changing from going from covid to being out of covid to going through a recession so the market is constantly changing and you're constantly having to change your your business and you get to a point where you're like oh finally i'm comfortable and then something changes and then you have to like you know there's so many different things in today's world so um i think you just have to be i think I mean, I've just learned to just be very open minded and just, you know, be ready for, you know, whatever comes my way. Um, so, yeah, I think those are the biggest challenges I've had so far. OK, now I know with your collections, you have like these um, bags that yes. um, in matching fabric. Uh, and you've spoken about having um, the interior decor collection. Yes. Um, can we expect to see maybe more accessories? Is that something definitely, you're exploring? Definitely. We're definitely looking to expand our, our, our lines, our offerings, definitely um, go into other products, um, enter new markets, and depends what the market you know wants as well. So we sort of um, um, curate collections for specific markets. So yeah, definitely. We're definitely looking to offer more pieces. Mm. Okay. Anything in particular we can expect this year? Um. I mean, definitely more prints, uh, more collections, more pieces. And we're really trying to push the brand to tell like a Nigerian story globally. So we will definitely be in different parts of the world. Thank you very much for being Thank our you guest for having me. on Robbie Minds. Thank and you.